The Outpost. It's one of the few places in Rust where you are considered safe. See, back in the day, we didn't have safe zones where we could recycle in peace. But now, players rely on these areas of tranquility. Your average Rust player is dependent on the services that the Outpost provides. From recyclers to oil refineries, marketplaces to drum kits, all of these amenities which we used to have to fight for are now handed to you on a silver platter. So, what can we do about this? In the grand scheme of things, not a lot really. However, for this wipe, I set out to make the outpost my own. I would build a wall. A wall which would surround the outpost and make it much more difficult to access for everyone else on the server. It certainly wouldn't be easy and people were definitely going to try and stop me from taking away something they so heavily rely on. But eventually, with enough persistence, we could have an entire safe zone inside our compound. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let me take you back to the beginning. The beginning, of course, being a naked on the beach. All right. We've got outpost marks. We'll head straight there and try and build a base around there. Yes, okay. We have BPs on this server, so that's going to be hella helpful. We could head past um, cabins, lighthouse, and gas station. Try and get a green card on the way, actually. All right, let's head to the uh, lighthouse, see if we can get a green card from it. Oh. Uh-oh. Recycle that. Craft a bow. I have like 10 arrows, not even. Are they running? I have five arrows, dude. I think I just killed him. Oh, I did kill him. Walling in a monument is no easy feat, and looking at this map, it wasn't too promising that the outpost would have a great node field nearby for farming. What it did have, though, was the large excavator right next to it. But before I explain how this massive quarry is going to help us build a wall, I need to tell you about Raid Shadow Legends. It's no secret that I enjoy doing challenges in games, and Raid certainly provides when it comes to challenges. With four different categories of challenges to pursue, there's always something to try and achieve. Raid has just released a giant new feature, Awakening, and brutal new dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you can successfully prove your worth against the Iron Twins, you'll be granted the ability to awaken your champions. This means that you can choose a powerful blessing to transform how they perform in battle. Raid has also just released a superpower legendary version of Death Knight. Ultimate Death Knight is everything we could have hoped for. To get him for free, all you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and October 27th. Whether you've played before or not, you can use the DK Rises promo code for a bunch of free items to instantly level your new strongest champion all the way to level 50. And if you're new, use the link in the description or scan the QR code and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking free epic champion Tayrell, 200k silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost and 1 ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in the game. All the treasure will be waiting for you right here. Thank you to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now back to the excavator. For those who don't know, the excavator monument when provided with diesel will do the farming for you. One diesel yields 10,000 stone and using the shop in outpost, you can then convert this stone for 33,000 wood. So one diesel equals 22 high external wooden walls with this process. The issue is running excavator solo isn't exactly a walk in the park. Damn, excavator's loud, uh oh. That's a big base there. Those guys are not going to like me using Excavator. I imagine those guys are the guys using Excavator right now, which could be an issue. Actually, let's craft a level two as well. This was the perfect start. Now all I needed to do was keep my head down and not push any dumb fights before I got a base down. Dude. Nice. After farming my way back to the outpost, I found a place I wanted to build and set up shop. The position was pretty much perfect, directly between the excavator and the outpost. Fantastic. I mean, I've got a green and a fuse, so maybe I head to the harbor real quick and try and pick up a blue. Ooh, oil's right there. Holy shit, there's a fishing village just there and oil rigs there. Large is just there. Ooh. Oh, shit.
There's no way he just hit me there. Damn it, dude. Rip green card. The oil rigs being this close was accidentally perfect. There are only four places on any rust map where diesel can spawn. The junkyard, the dome, and both oil rigs. Anyway, we'll worry about finding diesel later. We had just lost our green card, so I headed to the supermarket for another one. People have been here. Oh shit, people are here right now. Oh my god! There's two. Oh, what am I doing? It was already quite late for me, so I decided I would focus on upgrading the base a bit before getting off. I did one last run down the road for some scrap, which got me enough for a level 2 workbench, then expanded the base to include a little bit more honeycomb and a bunker that I could seal overnight. When I awoke, I used a level 2 workbench to craft a semi-automatic rifle, then got a blue card from the harbour and a red card from the train yard with very little resistance. We were now ready to take oil, and hopefully get our first diesel barrels of the wipe. Okay. It's actually not bad. That is so bad. What? Well, I ticked off the first oil rig of the wipe, but I may have stupidly forgotten to pick up exactly what we went there for in the first place. So we still had no diesel. After depoting this run at home, I headed straight back out, but this time went to the large oil rig. The loot was okay from this run, but we did manage to get a grenade launcher, which was definitely going to come in handy later. This time, I remembered to grab what diesel was there, and we returned home with a total of two. There's actually one more way to get diesel, and that's by purchasing it at Outpost. It's kind of expensive at 300 low grade per barrel, but using the refinery at Outpost, I could convert crude into low grade. One crude oil refines into three low grades, so 100 crude oil is one diesel. I decided I would head towards Dome, as that not only provides two diesel barrels, but also a bunch of oil barrels. I could also swing past the launch site on the way, which also spawns a lot of oil. Oh shit. He's in his roof, it's not even worth it.
Kazuko, a very important name in the tale of the outpost wall. He and his group lived on the edge of the desert, not too far away from where I would be building my wall. We'd definitely be running into him later, but for now, I attempted to do the dome run again. I need a heli is what I need. Bandit is just there. Do you reckon I can scavenge up with 750 scrap and get the bandit in my heli? After arriving home with the heli, I took 100 crude oil to the outpost, refined it to low grade and bought one more diesel, bringing our total to 5. We then noticed a locked crate had dropped nearby at the train yard, so we had to go try our luck. It's not started. I try and leave scientists there, and that's why. Did he just see me? Oh, there's a guy in that tower as well. Huh? Apparently they weren't together. How many more? How many more? Probably thought each other started the crates. Another guy far. Oh, what? He sees me? Did he stand up? That's the guy from the base down the hill from me in the compound. Kazuko once again stealing all our hard work. Frustrating to say the least. We now had five diesel, which was probably as much as I was willing to take to the excavator at any one time, given that I would have to defend it solo. So I crafted a level three workbench, then an AK, threw on my best kit and headed over the hill with the diesel I had. I'm just going to keep doing runs back to my base with loot, I think.
Hopefully by the time that airdrop's landing, it's finished and we can just come back and contest just the airdrop. Take it. Is that my heli? Oh, that's my heli. Oh, you dog. So, minus one minicopter, we had completed our first successful excavator run. With 50k stone in the bank, I decided I would use it to upgrade my base first. I know I said I was going to use it to make walls, but in this case, I think the base is probably the first priority. First though, I needed some wood so I could actually do some building. What? Stand up before he gets to my body, surely. It's an M2 from 130 meters away, dude. I think he's on excavator. Easy game. Good to know there's an M249 guy running around. Oh, well, they're doing excavator. Makes sense. Please don't shoot me from excavator. They're so bad. There's so many of them, dude. This was the same group that was currently running Excavator. They lived in the base in the water that I had seen at the very start of my wipe, and they were very big in numbers. Unfortunately for me, from this point on, they pretty much had Excavator on lock, making it practically impossible for me to run for myself. With the stone I did have, I expanded the base to a third floor and threw down my compound, which eventually was going to get a whole lot bigger. Before I got off for day two, I wanted to accomplish a few things that would help us towards our overall goal. First, I wanted to build three more bases on each side of the outpost so I could use these bases to divide my loot up overnight. And they would also come in handy when I was building the wall as somewhere to depot. And he's online. Satchel on the back of the base I just built. He's raiding the base I just built. I literally just built it. There's nothing in there. Are you taking the piss? Okay. Look at this guy. He's literally walking. Not even sprinting, just walking. Hello, man. Lol. He's clueless. After meeting Dennis, our neighbor who we would unfortunately have to eliminate pretty soon, I built the other two bases on the remaining sides of Outpost and got to work on my main base, building the shooting floor and the wide gaps just in case I was going to have to use it tomorrow. Once it was at a point that I could use comfortably to defend, I sealed the bunker and hopped off. We started day three by trying to do another launch site and dome run, however, we didn't quite make it to the launch before being distracted.
That's a decent fight. Oh, these guys are going to make me fight again. Okay. These guys are the guys that live right here. These guys probably get on their roof. Goes to roof with AK. Fantastic. Oh, <laughs> I'm screwed. They're both on their roof, man. Please, man, I got myself into a bit of a predicament. I didn't mean to get involved. I can't even peek it because he'll see me first. God, they are not good, are they? Yeah. This Kazuko guy's killed me a few times. Their base is too big to raid, though, I reckon. With our most recent run in with Kazuko ending in death by roof, I grabbed 750 scrap from base and took the train from near outpost all the way to bandit camp on the other side of the map. I bought a new minicopter, then flew it home, hoping to use it to access the snow and farm out there, given that the clan down the hill weren't going to let me use the excavator. Well, after getting only one farm run done in the snow, the clan apparently wasn't going to let me farm there either. No, man. It's the clan as well, dude. They're taking my heli. You don't need it, bro. The, t the fucking 20-man zerg's just taking my heli. They're going to make it so impossible to build this wall as well. With both my original plans of obtaining stone taken from me, I would instead resort to the good old running around with the jackhammer method. Thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. It's absolutely insane to think where I've come from to where I am now. And to celebrate, I'm giving away a big grin metal face mask skin on my Twitter right now. And it's one of the most sought after skins in the game. So click the link in the description and go join it. And if you haven't subbed yet, it's never too late. Make sure to hit the bell while you're down there. With this farm, I finished up my roof and managed to craft 80 walls, which I distributed between my four bases in preparation for the mission that we had in front of us for the next day. Because you can't build on roads, I also used this stone to build a base on either side of the gaps, which would eventually have turrets to prevent people from entering here. Now, something that I didn't anticipate was going to be such an issue was the number of bases that were built right on the edge of the outpost build zone. Ideally, I wanted as few bases inside my wall as possible, but that would mean raiding almost 15 bases, some of which were pretty big and difficult raids. I would do my best, but as it was already getting pretty late, I figured I would just do one raid before heading off for the night. I just want to raid this little 2 by one before they put metal on the side. Two sheet metal doors. Let's get x -Y Hello. I thought I had enough for TC, but I didn't. Oh, 
That's unfortunate. Damn, his building priv blocks me. Hello? One base down, plenty more to go tomorrow. Although it wouldn't be that simple. I woke up on day four and everything seemed to be all good. That was until I opened the bunker. Dude, I left that garage door open. I got offline, dude. There was a box of wood there, dude. Damn, dude, we got offline. They did not have enough. Oh, my rust just crashed. I didn't realize it yet, but this was not a good time for rust to crash. You may have noticed the hazmat suit that was on the ground when I went upstairs. Well, this basically confirmed that the raider had been here recently, and they were not finished with me yet. I've literally opened the bunker for them. That's scuffed, dude. That's scuffed. I have no wood to steal the bunker again. No, dude. No, man. They're just going to rocket PvP me, dude. What can I even do right now? What are they blowing? What are they blowing? And who else other than Kazuko himself? The failed offline raid attempt. He didn't come back for more and I went out to farm wood so I could patch the base up. Damn it, he got it. Good job, Bill. Good job. What, man? Is that you, Bill? 
It is. You're an idiot. <laughs> How am I <laughs> idiot? You shot at me inbound, you fucking... I kill you, man. You You're the idiot. Right inside the fucking thing. Yes, and I put my loot so away because I knew I would get shot. Centuries. Yes, I put my loot away, though, because I'm not oh, dumb okay. like you. Well, you can never get my loot, so haha, -ha, you're lost. I think you just brought the loot into the area. I can loot it now. I could have farmed this wooden this time. I love how he was calling me an idiot because I died to the outpost. And then he just hung around with his loot that I wanted and I just took it. <laughs> calling me the idiot. Your base bill because guess what yeah raid it bro go for your life man raid it we fixed up the base completely and then went on a pretty big farm run managing to fill up multiple boxes of stone before we could do any wall placing though we had to get rid of those bases along the edge of the outpost build zone first one in line That's really unfortunate. I gotta go through a garage door. It's definitely not gonna be worth, but I gotta do it. Worth. We love to see it. Huge profits. It's Kazuko. If Outpost shoots me right now, I'm not going to be happy. Four bases down, still a lot to go. I was already running low on sulfur just from these few raids, so I figured a good alternative would be to leave a few of the more chunky bases and wall around them instead. There were four bases that would be left inside, three of which were from the same group on the hill and the other being a shop on the southern side. I really didn't have any issues leaving them. After all, if I was in their position, I'd probably rather be walled out of outpost than into outpost. We still weren't going to have enough sulfur for the bases we did need to raid those, so when I heard someone was taking Excavator, I knew I needed to try and counter. If someone is running Excavator right now, I'm going to go counter. He knew I was. Thor camping, bitch. I reckon he knew I was going to go counter. Heli's out, though. Now. 
And now the real funny business goes down. Dude, it's inside outpost. It's literally within within safe zone. I'm I've got ping, bro. Huh? Don't know what he did to deserve that. The, all the crates are right here. As soon as one goes, I gotta run to it. I don't wanna be outside safe zone. Because if I'm outside safe zone, I can get beamed. If I go here, look, it's right. I'm outside safe zone, I can die. I wanna be. I don't wanna get hedge bite shot by a bolt or something. I wanna be as close as possible, but not outside safe zone. If that one goes out on the far side, I can't get it. <laughs> I got all four. It was shit loot, except for that. But there's no way I get all four. Now I gotta make it back to base. I just gotta do it. These extra explosives were exactly what we needed, and with it, I got straight back to raiding the bases we needed to evict. Fantastic. Oh, this guy's gonna be piss poor. We can breathe. Holy shit, there's nothing in here. To ensure that the wall wouldn't decay, I had to place tool cupboards along the entire thing. I decided that I would start doing this now as well as raiding the remaining bases. In each tool cupboard, I put more than 10 days of upkeep, which would last until the end of this server's wipe. We've done TCs from that base there around up to this base here.
We've got TCs from there around to here and then from just there all the way to my base over there. And then we're going around these two bases up here. I'm not going through them. It's a very narrow gap of where I can put buildings here. I might need to raid this furnace base as well. If I raid this furnace base, we're all good. Oh. Alright, so this is a sheet metal door. We'll go for just a stack of expo ammo, try and go through two sheet metal doors and then see where we get to. Look at that high qual. The crude, man. I don't need... Holy shit. I don't need crude, but... Crude. I didn't think I needed crude, but it would actually come in handy pretty soon. I did, however, have one more base I needed to raid before I could actually start putting this wall down. And it proved to be more difficult than it probably should have. Oh, God. I've got two bodies I need to loot. Oh, it's the same guy. He's outside again. Damn. Is he raiding it? Why? He wants those comps that badly? Why raid it, bro? I don't need the loot. I need the TC. He only had to run raid one door and all his satchels went off. What? Okay. After placing all the remaining tool cupboards, we had the outpost completely surrounded with our building privilege. I was suspicious that we hadn't run into the nearby Zerg at all today, and as it would turn out, they were either raided or had quit for the wipe. This opened the door back up to running excavator and I had the crude from the raids to be able to buy five diesel. I don't see a single scientist. I don't remember hearing anyone clear it, but I guess they did. I have no idea where to sit and hold this as a solo dude. What am I doing here? Where have I gone? That works. Is it going to land on that? No. It is. Fucking now.
Good excavator run, though. Time to sit there converting stone for the next half an hour. Fantastic. And that's exactly what we did. 50k stone into more than 100 high external wood walls. Now we just had to place them. You thought you'd seen your last Yexen walling montage. Well, I've got news for you. Fuck, man. So I still had one more base I needed to raid. Great. Okay, so the wall has gone the whole way around, except for the gaps in the roads, which I'm going to put turrets on, and then a gap over there where a base is I need a raid. I think down bottom. What are you doing, man? You know there's a hole right here. Are you serious? <laughs> Holy shit. Here. Here. Where are you? Here, take this as a gift. You have a good one, okay? Have a good day, man. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> It's complete. We officially have the outpost walled in. I finished it off by placing barricades, batteries, solar panels, and of course turrets across both roads, closing in the final gaps. As much as I would have liked to raid Kazuko, it was pretty clear that his group's base was out of my budget. And given that I had to raid so many bases just to build the wall, I decided I would also leave the few bases left in my compound. Besides, watching the mold in chat was equally as fun. I did have hope that I had pissed off a big group enough for an online raid, however, as per usual, it never came. And that's the story of how I managed to wall in the most important monument on the server. Thank you for watching and thank you guys so much for 100k. Make sure to go check out this video too where I walled the map completely in half. And also go subscribe to my new second channel where I'll be posting more Rust content and maybe some other games I feel like playing.